Today is July 29th, 2012, and we thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend with Greater New Hope Church International. Today we will hear God's message from Pastor Charles E. McDaniel. Today's message is entitled, The Joy in Loving the Lord, Part 3. The background scriptures will be coming from Nehemiah 8 and 10 and James 1 and 2, taken from the King James Version of the Bible. Again, we thank you for joining us. Please open your hearts and minds to be fed and filled with the word of God. Know that the Lord gives strength unto his people, and the Lord blesses his people with peace. Psalms 29 and 11. Amen. And we're still on this journey, and I hope you've been traveling with an open heart, because we're talking about joy is the fruit of a right relationship with God. You know. And joy also is being happy, having yes. a happy state of life. That is a result of just knowing God. Yeah. And it's important that we understand those things because when we know God, and uh, it produces a certain results in our life, we have a tendency to be a little more quiet about things. You don't get bent out of shape. All right, Pastor. Praise you don't let folks see you sweat. And it's very important because you really don't have to. Let's go to the Word. I, I'm only going to use the, the, the B portion of Nehemiah 8. It says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Get that together. Not walk around moping, mealy mouthing, poor me baby. That's not going to get it done. What happens is the reason you don't have to do that is because in our New Testament text, I'm not diverting from what the Lord has given me, but I want you to focus in on something. It says, my brethren, talk to church folks, Count it all joy. I said count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation. Amen. Now don't look at that word as in the Greek. It, ha it has multiple meanings depending on contextual references. Don't say when you're tempted, number one, that you're tempted of God. So let's get that out the way. It means problems of life. Yes, sir. When you fall into problems of life, you have a choice to either use the physical to solve it. That's when your wants get in conjunction with that sin or that temptation over there, and it will produce sin. But when you decide to say, no, no matter what, I'm going to inquire of the Lord whether I should do this or that. Yes, because it's very important. It's some things that once we get settled in our heart, I'm not saying life is going to be easy, but as it's, it's, it's one thing it can't be, it's hard because only the way of the transgressor is hard. That one that just want to be a knucklehead, want to do their own thing, don't think God can give them joy. But, but, but I tell you, my darlings, if you begin to understand when God touched every one of us, something should have happened. Amen. But I don't want you to let me say, and I'm saying this, in other words, there's a state that you get into that will lead you into a life of joyfulness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you just do what yes, it says. Let's get book on. We'll spend just a little time in Psalm 126. All of us have sinned yes. and fallen short of the glory of God. That's, if you're in these clay pots, I'm sorry. Mm. That's the way you are. Yes, sir. But there's something that can happen. See, we think that we chose God, but God... Jesus make it plain, and I think in Matthew, one, I think one of them five or six right now said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I chose you. 
But keep in mind now, let's go to Psalm 126 and 1. It's only six verses there, and that's very important because this is the state of man. But now, what happens to man is when this happens. It says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. In other words, we out there in boom, boom land at first. Out there just dreaming about what we want to do. How many of us, I understand we're supposed to have dreams. But see, when we just think those dreams are more important than this word, we're in trouble. Amen, it says, but when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, meaning has a lot of connotation there. That, 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 that's that, that place that God married, has a, a geographical location. We're talking about us as a people who were grafted in. We were like them that dream. We were like the world. We were just out there, woo, hey, got it going on. Everything, man, I, 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 I dreamed I'm going over to so-and-so place. Boy, we're going to have a box. Don't have a clue. No, sir. What could happen? That may be your last day. Because you're in a place that God didn't design you to be. you dreaming about something that you think that, that the Playboy Mansion, all that's got it going on. And when you get there, you'll find out it ain't all of that in the bag of chips. It's just, it leads down a, a, a road of depravity. You have to understand, when you get to dreaming about certain things on this earth, they say, we were like them that dream. Dreamers. Walking around with, with delusions of grandeur. Yes, sir. We have to bring it down where it's real. Now listen. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said, they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Now understand, you got a beautiful verse there, that when you realize that God has touched your life, then you genuinely really do start singing. You really do start dancing. See what it said? I'm going to read that again now. Then said them among the heathen. In other words, the heathen watching you just like he's watching them heathen. Y'all hear what the Lord's saying? The Lord has done great things for them. Understand, that's a very loaded verse. When God touches your life, people remember when you, who you were, what you did. And when they see an absolute bona fide change in your life, they have to acknowledge that. Now listen, it says again, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are what? Glad. Did you notice it's never a downward thing? I'm glad about it. I'm glad he touched my life. I'm glad that he decided I was worthy to be one of his elect. Now listen, turn again our captivity. Now they're starting to pray, yeah, man. Turn again our captivity, O oh Lord, as the stream in the south. I ain't got time to explain all that, I'm, I'm, but I'm, as the stream in the south. In other words, that thing comes away from that north pretty fast. I want you to think about that. When you look at Psalm 75, that's a, that's a geographical yeah. location that's yeah. omitted. Yeah. And you don't want to, in other words, you want to leave the coldness and the dreaminess of this world, not that you can't appreciate the beauty, but, 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 but you don't have time to be dreaming about it when all you got to do, if you lack wisdom, ask God. Yeah. You say, I, how many, if, if many of us would just simply do the Lord, should I go to this yeah. party? Have you ever asked God that? And then when he told you no, <laughs> you still went anyway? Or you went somewhere that he told you not to go? Uh, it gives you the right to do that now. Yes, sir. Uh, you hear what I'm saying? They that sow, listen now, you might be crying. They got sports so wrapped up now that little kids are just falling out crying because their team didn't win. They didn't go on. But that's the world. Yes, it is. 
And and sometimes we feel a little bad when folks get to point out, you want no more Christians? Yeah, I ain't gonna back down off of that. Not at all. So see all everything you do, you got to dream it. I can know it. Because I serve the one that made it. Is anybody hearing what the Lord is saying this morning? I don't have to dream, but I know it. Now listen, they sowed in tears, but what happened? Shall reap in joy. Understand this. Whatsoever you sow, that, that's kind of a contradiction to God's word. No, it's not. If you stand out there in the dreamers, and when God touch you, you know what you've blown. Yeah. You know what you've done. You have a complete, nobody knows you better than you other than God. Amen. Every one of us know we've done dumb stuff. Every one of us. Okay. That not a one in there, I don't care, even the small kid, know they done hid something, lied about and tore up something that they don't want mom and dad to find out about. But I don't understand that God knows. So once we get that straight with God, he can handle the rest. Anybody hearing what? And you might have some tears. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bringeth precious seed, shall doubtlessly come again with what? Rejoicing, bringing, bringing his sheep with him. When I come to the realization I belong to God, I don't have to rely on dreaming. You know, a lot of us got dreams. Nothing wrong with it. No. I had dreams. Played in the NFL. Got there, broke up my knees, everything. So that, 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 that dream didn't work out too well, did it? But what happens because I realized when God turned and touched me, yes, sir. I may have been crying about the fact that I didn't go as far in pro ball as I wanted to. But now I'm reaping in God. Amen. Amen. Are y'all hearing me this long? I'm able to praise God in spite of these old bad, in spite of whatever's happened to me. I still can stand before you and say, I love the Lord with all my heart and all my soul and with all my might. And I love my neighbor as myself. See, what we don't understand is the minute God turns to you, and you allow him to come in your heart, do you know what happens in heaven? Let's try and get some. So I want you, I'm, the Lord leading us somewhere. Go with me if you don't mind. It says Luke 15 and verse 7, if you'll turn there with me. We ain't going to be much longer now, but I want you to grab hold of this. I say unto you, listen, I say unto you, that likewise joy, what does it say, y'all? Joy, listen now, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety-nine, ninety and nine just persons. Now, that's a distinct difference, and I don't want you to run by it. What does that mean? You know, some folks say, I'm living pretty clean. I don't do certain things, but you're still out there with, I don't see much difference between you and them dreamers out there. Amen. When, when you wear your skirts as short as them dreamers out there. Because they think the shorter they wear the dress, the more attention they're going to get. But it may not be the right kind. The tighter they wear. Young men will get all hung up in the wrappers where they down to their rump. They... That's dreaming. Yes, it is, Can't even pull the britches up to go on stage sometimes. But I mean, I'm not telling you, if that's your thing, hey, have a nice trip. But now it comes a time when you have to understand that the very day that you repented, genuinely repented, and the Bible says only godly sorrowfulness brings about repentance. Meaning, I remember when I was out there in Boom Boom Land dreaming and Talking about what I was going to do, how much liquor I could drink, and all that. Wait, don't act like y'all know what we're talking about. There's folks still out there, Bob. They got, well, you say, I, I can't drink nothing but so and so and so and so, you know. And, and, and I got to have this kind of. Why do you think they advertise it like that? That's a dream that you can't achieve. It's going to wreck your life. Amen, Pastor. Teach over 
But you got something that if you just accept it, when he calls on you. Yes, sir. Lord, have mercy. Yes, sir. Y'all hear what the Lord say? Yes, 99 persons which need no repentance. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of folks playing church. Yes. You got some folks say, all I need to do is be saved. That's all this. I but wait a minute. No. Save. I understand what that means. Yes, sir. But they make no effort to learn of him like he asked them. They just stay, they, they, they want to be in that little dream state where I can float back over there to the, to the world and then float.